I'm Lena Rao here at the TechCrunch TV studio at TechCrunch Disrupt New York. I am joined by John Donahoe, the CEO of eBay. Welcome, John. Thank you. Great to be here, Lena. Really excited to have you in the studio. I know you just talked a lot about um, mobile and curation and all these incredible things that eBay is doing on the technology side to increase engagement, um, drive sales, and it's working. I mean, your earnings are you know, you've been beating expectations and you're doing well financially. Um, I just checked your latest market cap was like $65 billion. What, was this a hard road to get to? You know, I mean, eBay was not always known as the most innovative e-commerce company out there. Well, you know, it's, the challenge has been how do we take the purpose? One of the th things that has made the road easier is a sense of, strong sense of core purpose in the company and then just commit to innovation. And if there's anything that's happened over the last five, six years, it is the commitment to innovation and, and particularly commitment to the user experience. I was just talking with someone actually who just said, you know, I'm an eBay user. And the user experience is so much better. Yeah. And, and so our focus is actually not on the revenues and the earnings and the market cap. Our focus is on the user experience. And the metric I'm most proud of at the moment is we're having accelerating new user growth. That's what tells me that that experience is getting better and better, and the innovations are engaging consumers more and more. So how many new users did you add uh, last quarter? Well, you had accelerating growth in both, in both eBay and PayPal. So we're adding roughly 5 million new users a quarter in PayPal, and that's global, and roughly 4 million new users uh, a quarter in the core eBay business. So and that's an increase from the previous it's quarter. It's just we've had five, six straight quarters of accelerating growth rates. And part of that's driven by the emerging markets and, and brick and emerging markets world where you just have a whole generation of people coming online for the first time. And eBay and PayPal are the, often the first place to do a transaction because there's no local e-commerce markets. Right. And then, and then the other half of that is just more and more people in, in, in the United States and other developed markets. Mobile's interesting because uh, registering on a mobile device, we've made it incredibly easy. So we had um, over 4 million people register on mobile devices. And so that's another way. Instead when of actually registering online. Online. On and it's just easier. And increasingly, right, people's worlds are, are I have my mobile phone, I won't pull it out. But that's, that's increasingly the sort of central control center of our lives. And so our, we're focusing an awful lot of what we do of making our mobile experience more and more compelling, more and more engaging. So all these things going well at eBay and PayPal, what keeps you up at night? What do you, oh, what well, do you well, think about? Two things. About? Innovation. Speed. I mean, there's, there's innovation happening all around us. And on one hand, it's what gives us the opportunity. Oops, get a mic. Mm -hmm. um, it's what gives an opportunity, but there's always, always more that is being done. And are we innovating fast enough? Are we innovating and executing successfully enough? And then people, having the best people, attracting, developing, retaining the best people. So uh, I do stay up late at night. Do you? Yeah, sure. I mean. Always. That, you have to be paranoid. You have yeah. to be. Because technology is changing what's possible to do with consumers in ways that are, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. It's, it's what I was saying outside, right? Same thing in the media industry, right? right? Just the pace of change in the media industry and the consumers in charge, right? Same thing is in the midst of happening in, in retail and in payments. And we're at the middle of it. It's enormously exciting. I want to talk about that innovation angle because it's not just innovating these days. It's innovating fast. Yes. And how do you innovate fast as a big company? Well, you have to, you have to get pockets of innovators, is what I was talking about outside. Right. It's, and what's interesting is that's why some of these acquisitions of so many founders, because many of these founders are oriented about innovating quickly, innovating and iterating. And often when we let them get in, take the hunch guys who here in New York, in the first year, they had the chance to take their technology and take big data and innovate around merchandising and eBay. And, and at first, we had them just innovating around the edges of merchandising at eBay. And so they could test and learn, test and learn, get their algorithms refined. Then once we felt like there was enough traction, they're now in charge of merchandising for the entire eBay marketplace globally, the entire homepage, our social commerce experience. So once you get at scale, then, then of course, the pace of innovation has to be a little bit different because it's impacting, it's impacting hundreds of millions of users. In terms of the social angle, I'm, I'm curious about that. You know, there have been a lot of back and forth on whether social works in commerce, especially e-commerce, um, you know, whether that be via Facebook or Twitter or, um, you know, social deals. What's your stance on that? 
Well, I think, I think what's happened is, um, you know, mobile was a ubiquitous, across the board phenomenon, right? Social commerce isn't going to be the same way. And I think initially people thought social commerce meant Facebook or Twitter or one platform. I think what's going to be happening is more engaging commerce online. So in the offline world, shopping is often a social experience. You go to the mall with your friends and family, at least many people do. And I think what's going to happen online is that ability to engage, engage with the product, engage with people will go up. But it won't be one ubiquitous solution. So how young girls want to engage with each other when they're clo shopping for clothing, that will play its way out on mobile and in, in stores differently than how motorcycle enthusiasts want to engage each other when they're looking at new motorcycles or car parts. And so I think you'll see more social engagement. And, and you see the web and through mobile devices and through other ways allowing more engagement. Um, and you'll see that working its way into the shopping experience and even into possibly the payments experience. But it'll happen vertical by vertical and it'll happen differently across the different verticals. So you do think there's an element or room for social in the payments experience? A absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting, our founder, Pierre Midiar, sees things and he's so wonderful because he has such clarity of thought. Um, he, he would say that we're at a fork in the world of technology. That to date, a lot of technology has driven efficiency, scale, and automation. You could argue things that dehumanize, right? Right. And now technology is at a stage where it can connect people and it can rehumanize a lot of the things that have been dehumanized. And so an awful lot of the world that we're driving toward that we see is one where there is a lot of engagement. It's still around commerce, it's still around payments, but it's one that has a very strong human element, person to person, or even inside companies. Take, I'm gonna give you an example. PayPal check-in for payments. Mm -hmm. You go to PayPal check-in and you check in before you walk into any retailer except PayPal. When you walk in, your picture and name is on their cash register, on their receiving device. So when you walk in, someone can say, hey, Lena, how you doing? Right. Would you like the usual? Right. That's no, and but that, and that and human that, interaction. That gives a personalized experience for you coming into the store and then for the store person who can, even if they don't know you, they can offer a more personalized right. experience. You're much more likely to strike up a conversation then. That's right. Well, John, unfortunately, we, uh, that's all the time that we have today, but thank you so much for coming to Disrupt. It's great to we had be a here. great, great, great time conference. With you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much.